Hey guys, this is Gary Chan. I uh, wanted to do a video on how to do your own home valuation. You might have gone online and come across a landing page that says, what is your home worth? And you put in your address so that a realtor can reach out to you and do a home estimate for you. Um, this is going to be a little bit different because if you don't have access to the MLS backend, you can't put the address in and then just it spits you out a 100 page report. But it will give you a better understanding of how homes are evaluated for how much they are worth. So I'm just on Zillow here in the Chicago area. I'm looking at a listing here at 4220 North Mozart Street, just listed 12 hours ago. And I'm going to click in. So it's a five bedroom, four bathroom, 4,200 square feet home built in, if we scroll down here, we can find what the year build is. And that's important just to get an idea of how new it is. Year built 2007, right? And it is a brick building. So these key characteristics are important to do a comparable market analysis we're going to be looking for houses in the neighborhood with similar number of bedrooms, bathrooms, square footage, year build, and brick building. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to find out, hey, is the Z estimate accurate in this case? Because sometimes it's accurate and sometimes it's not. I'll give you an example. I've seen it where property is 750 before and then after it lists, it might change to 850, like a $100,000 difference. Um, the listing price itself may affect the Z estimate. The comparables might affect the estimate. Uh, really what realtors use typically are the closed sales, not so much the recent sales. And let me give you an example because Zillow does not show similar properties. A really excellent site to use is called homesnap.com. So we can go to homesnap, okay? And we're going to put the address into this uh, search here. And what we get is we get, again, 4220 North Mozart Street. Okay. And we see for sale at 850 for rent. It was off market in September for sale in August, rented in September, off market for sale in July. So this property has been on and off the market quite a bit. Um, over the last few years, a little bit curious as to why. Um, let's just say every two, every year or two, it they, they put it on the market to see if they can get a sale. But I don't really see see back down here, two thousand eight, it sold, and they sold for eight twenty four. So maybe the original owner for uh, the last ten years has been trying to get what they want, but the market just, you know, 2008 was kind of maybe the peak of the market. So they just were never able to get what they wanted for the sale. So again, they're tempting now. Um, this is good to know. The estimated taxes for this property, $15,257. And what I want to show you is, oh, here, here's another little thing. So garages, right? It's an attached two-car garage. What I wanted to say is that if you're looking comparables and your property has a garage, but your comparable property has no garage, and you're thinking, hey, this garage is worth, you know, cost $30,000 to build it, the appraiser's not gonna give you that much for it. They might give you an extra $5,000, maybe $10,000 if you're lucky. Some appraisers might not give you anything for the garage. So um, just keep that in mind, like these extra add-ons, things that like, let's say you have a jacuzzi and it costs you $3,000 to put it in. They might not give you anything for that. Um, if you put insulation in the walls, no, there, you know, it's not something you can visibly tell. Um, it's not going to add a whole lot of value to your resale, unfortunately. I'm trying to find um, down here. Similar, okay, here, this is good. Similar listings right here, okay? So I'm gonna click here. And we've got similar property. We look again, five bedrooms, three and a half bath for Catalpa, 840. This one's for sale, five beds, three and a half bath on Christiana for 925. 
Oakley, five bed, three and a half bath at 929. So, I mean, if we're comparing these, these this is frame in on top of it, but these look more like houses in the, in the comparable property that we're, and the property, uh, I should call it the subject property that we have here is an all brick. So there may be something that impacts the actual value because see this one's brick and this is 879, four beds, four and a half baths. So those are the properties that are on the market. So one strategy is you could say, well, we can price it as if we want to price higher, right? Let's say that these recent sales are, they're lower and the market's moving up and the, the, the properties that are listed are higher priced, we could say, hey, look, we're pricing to what's currently on the market, what's available, and the market's moving up, you know? But we're at 850 for this subject property, and it seems pretty reasonable, I would say, because see, the only other brick house is at 879. It's four beds and four and a half baths, so it's even one less bedroom. But the recent sales are really more uh, solid of what an appraiser is going to use. So this one's at 840, closed, this one at closed at 850, this one closed at 905, but this is a frame house. This one closed at 870, frame, 820, frame, 890. Um, kind of a mixed brick and frame, but more of a frame. Um, well, maybe brick, but um, hard to say. 840 for this one frame. 895 frame, right? And usually uh, they'll use the three properties that are the most similar. These I would say, <laughs> very hard to say which ones are actually similar. Um, so, but, but an appraiser is gonna use three subject properties. And that's what kind of makes the whole appraisal process kind of iffy because one appraiser might choose let's say these three, 840, 850, 905, take an average, right? Another appraiser might take these higher values. Let's say 905, 890, 895, and then you've got an appraiser that can help you price up your property to what you need to close a deal. Um, until, you, until you get into the nitty gritty of this, um, I'm just kind of giving you the basics here right? Because we could have, we'd have to dive deeper into this. We'd have to click through these properties and take a look at the year build and take a look at the pictures too and see, like for example, I'm looking at this one. What is the condition of the interior? Looks pretty good, right? Stainless steel uh, appliances, nicely well lit, remodeled, updated. And our subject property, does it have the same similar look? Now they didn't stage this, but we do have granite counters and stainless steel appliances, right? Um, so this is an excellent resource. And another one is homes.com. Waiting for this to load, location not found. Hmm. Let's see if I put the word Chicago at the end, if it's going to be able to find it. Well, I did try this one earlier, just so you know, and it didn't really have similar properties in the bottom. But it's definitely worth trying because they used to have a lot of really nice uh, comparables that you could use on this site. Um, it's not working right now, but I, I would just say try this one out, okay? Um, then I would try the other ones that are common, like redfin.com. Okay, they're a broker site themselves. Let's see, redfin.com. Let's put the address in. And it's listed. And I'm going to go to the bottom and see if they have similar properties we can compare it to see recommended for you but these are kind of different um, here nearby similar homes okay 
Damn, a lot of messages. Nearby similar homes. Okay, four bed, four baths. This is listed at a million fifty, right? Frame house. It's not even brick with less square footage. Well, maybe this is a couple blocks in a different location, and so it somehow can price higher. But, you know, it's going to depend if the appraiser can accept this property as a similar comparable property. Sometimes if you go across a, a highway, a major road, you're into a completely different neighborhood, and that could impact the pricing here. But if you get the right appraiser and you're lucky, they might use this one because um, they find that the neighborhoods are similar enough. And it's kind of at the liberty of the appraiser to make that decision. See, on Redfin, we're getting pr properties with higher pricing here. And um, it would be, if you own this property, you might get lucky if you can get some comparables that would that would fit this. But I, I would think an appraiser for Chicago would really want to compare brick with brick, frame with frame. And because we're not getting a whole lot of brick buildings, it's unfortunate that we also don't have a whole lot of comparables here. And that again is another challenge of doing an appraiser, an appraisal. Um, let's see, popular searches. So yeah, I would then check uh, realtor.com and see if it has anything. Oops, let's see, I'm gonna put buy, okay. Sorry about all this. Okay, let's paste this in. Okay, so we're looking at this property on realtor.com. And again, we're just trying to find comparable properties, similar, and realtor.com here. Homes around 850, okay? So we could take these down. This one's 970, but it's got six beds, six baths, and again, frame. This one's got six beds, three baths, so one more bed, one less bath. I think that's going to be hard as a comparable. Um, nine beds, four baths, right? A lot of these don't have a similar number of beds and baths or square footage, um, unfortunately. And these are properties that are on the market. They're not sold. So that, that might be a little bit more difficult. I would, I would just Google the address, right? and see if you can get something here, Cobalt Banker Homes, no, Realtor.com, Redfin, East Stately. Is a Stately gonna give me some comparable properties? Maybe, maybe not, right? Similar homes sold. This is what you want. You want similar homes sold with number, same number of beds and baths. And if you get lucky, notate it on a, on a notepad and um, keep that as information you can use. Um, apartments, hot pads, those are more for rentals, so they may not give you that kind of data. Trulia.com, I've never heard of Zumper. Let's just take a look at it and see if we get lucky. This looks like it's more for rental related stuff here. see rental trends, but this is good information because if you buy this property and you're thinking about renting, you wanna know how much you can get for the rental, right? Okay, Trulia might be helpful here. Let's take a look. And notice that the square footage here says 3,600 square feet, where the other site said 4,000. I would take a note of that just to make sure, you know, you can always, call the agents and find out if this is accurate information. Here, year build 2020, right? We're getting a little bit of discrepancy with information. So I would say that this information is not as accurate. Somehow maybe it's not aggregating the data from the MLS. Similar homes you may like. Four bed, two bath, 1900 square feet on Troy Street, but considerably lower priced and not the right number of bedrooms and bathrooms for a lot of these. So that's not helping us. New listings near 3611 North Mozart Street. This one's a six bed, four bath, but significantly less in square footage. 
However, Trulia was having problems giving us the right number of square footage on this particular property. So we could note this one down, take a look at this 4915 North California Avenue and see if, um, if maybe we could get more updated square footage number and see if this is actually a reasonable comparison. And then we just go through these again. This has a very tedious, time-consuming process, but um, if you are looking to list your property and get the most bang for your buck, this is definitely something that will be worth your time. Even, even if you use a realtor to uh, run you a comparable market analysis and they have all that data, it's just like anything else. Ask five doctors for a professional opinion, get five different answers. Ask five different realtors their opinion. They will be using different subject properties and you might be getting different numbers. Um, so some people who are more of the do-it-yourself side of things, they would think that this is valuable. If it's too much of a headache, an alternative thing you could do is call three different realtors and uh, see what kind of numbers that they're giving you. And you're going to get all sorts of different opinions, of course. Uh, you might get some that are higher, some that are lower. But again, um, ultimately, it's your decision on what you think is going to be the most realistic number. Um, again, if you price up too high, you might sit on the market too long. If you price too low, you might get too little for your, you know, you might get too little. Or if you're really lucky and you have a lot of offers, you might get um, the house priced up higher than, than what your initial um, listing price is. But I, I would say you definitely want to list um, pretty close to what the market is and what um, buyers are willing to pay for it. And this is kind of like searching for a magic number, you know. Anyway... I hope that helps anyone out there looking for doing a home value on their house. And until next time, I will talk to you later or see you in another video.